we start our look back with a timeline. Uh, we have to start with 1889, which is the date in which um, the young American republics met after the War of the Pacific. They met together in Washington DC with the United States, around 19 states altogether at that time. And uh, they met in this first conference of American republics, which um, history books indicate is the first international intergovernmental organization in history. Uh, these states together in this organization develop many rules of international law, international, private international law and public international law. And eventually they transformed this organization in 1910 into the Pan-American Union. Um, they continued uh, with their meetings every year, uh, advancing um, international law in many areas that had to do with human mobility, that had to do with the recognition of uh, uh, women's rights or a women's situation vis-a-vis -vis civil law. And in 1928, uh, they created the Inter-American Commission on Women, uh, the first um, institution of its kind that is still working today. Um, by 1945, with the end of the Second World War, they met in Mexico at the Chapultepec Conference uh, and they had the very first discussions about setting up a human rights treaty and organs of international protection. But it would only be by 1948, with the adoption of the Charter of the Organization of American States, when they changed the name of the organization and they shaped it into the organization that we know today, that they adopted uh, the first instrument, which was the American Declaration on the Rights and Duties of Man. This is a very important instrument. We have to think that at the time, um, there was a parallel process uh, at the United Nations level, and that uh, many of these states that were members, founding members of the OAS, were also founding members of the United Nations. At the time, with, with 15 member states, um, there was a considerable number of states from the Americas that were also in the United Nations, and they also helped shaping uh, the Universal Declaration of, of Human Rights uh, in areas as important as equality and right to justice. Uh, by 1959, only then, uh, the states decided to create an organ an organ of supervision, which was the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, uh, which originally was created to uh, carry out uh, in local observations and issue reports on certain um, countries, situation in certain countries. Uh, but the commission evolved into a fully-fledged organ, uh, and, and we'll see more of that later. Uh, Ten years later, in 1969, they adopted the American Convention on Human Rights, which is um, the foundational instrument, now a treaty, not a declaration, uh, that creates a system very much inspired by the European system, a system with a commission, the pre-existent Inter-American Commission, and an Inter-American Code of Human Rights. But it would take almost 10 years for this convention to enter into force. At the time, there were uh, a number of authoritarian and uh, governments and dictatorships in the continent. And it was very difficult to gather the number of ratifications that were necessary for the instrument to enter into force. But finally, in 1978, it was possible to do so and uh, the convention entered into force. And finally, the Inter-American Code of Human Rights was created, 1979, that's the date. 